You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Uh, as most of you know, here on this show, we're big advocates for social justice and civil rights. And right now, one of the things that is unacceptable to most of us is the false imprisonment of Leonard Peltier. And it, virtually everyone from Rage Against the Machine to Bishop Tutu to Nelson Mandela has asked for this man's release. He's been imprisoned for over 30 years. And whether you're the Dalai Lama or 50 combined senators and congressmen who want this man out of prison, Combat Radio formally joins this campaign to get this man released from his imprisonment at Lewisburg. We want that man out, and we want him out right the fuck now. Tyson, what's the movie review for the day? What do you have? Uh, well, uh, recently I saw the documentary uh, Incident at Oglala. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Brilliant documentary. Unbelievable. Go ahead. It's a, it's amazing. Well, um, let's see. It came out in 1992. It was directed by Michael Apted, narrated by Robert Redford. And it documents the murder of two uh, FBI agents uh, on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation uh, who were killed in the summer of 75. And then, it, of course, the wrongfully imprisoned Leonard Peltier. And we are very passionate about that. And for those of you who don't know who Leonard Peltier is, you know, Nelson Mandela, Bishop Tutu, the Dalai Lama, mm-hmm. 50, a combined 50 senators and congressmen have all asked for, you know, not to mention a lot of celebrity types, for Peltier's release. This documentary, I believe, is a major reason for that because this thing, I mean, we're not talking about speculative possibilities where the case is concerned. We are talking about what becomes almost a your stupid motherfucker frame up in your face bit that's almost ridiculous to believe. And I'm sorry, I get so angry about it because anyone who's seen this documentary, you get to a point where you're watching it where you can't even believe it. I mean, Lotus stormed out of the room watching oh, yeah. it. I've seen it several times. I, I think it's very good. And Thunderheart was the movie with Val Kilmer that's based on the documentary. Um, yeah, it does concern uh, elements of the story that was happening around the time, absolutely. Uh, it's not uh, to be, Thunderheart's not really to be taken as a literal interpretation of... No, of it's not, the, but that's what it is. Isn't it yeah, a serious yeah. move, though, to get him paroled now? For how long has he been in prison? He's been in prison over for 30 years. Tw- over 30 years. Mm-hmm. So... The thing about it, even the some of the federal elements that were on the case have asked for his release. Uh, you know, there's there's major there's major conflicts in evidence, including falsified affidavits that the government now admits have been falsified to mm-hmm. to get him extradited from Canada. Three different affidavits by a witness who never even met him until the day she was to testify him against court in court oh, yeah. because she was threatened to be the FBI threatened to put her in a meat grinder. If you go to the Combat Radio wants Leonard Peltier out Facebook page, you'll see clips from 60 Minutes covering the case. You'll see clips from the prison. You know, prison guards and different people, different video and film clips, Amnesty International about this case. The ballistic evidence never lined up for Peltier. Clearly, the casings that they were using to base their case on, they later admitted did not even come from his gun. It's ridiculous. Tyson, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, you were saying basically what I was, I was absolutely was there with you. There, There's so many things that have come to light since the uh, incident and since the documentary itself. I uh, I can't believe he's actually still in prison. It's got to be something some something is wrong. I I, I I'm actually tempering my anger uh, at the moment because it's 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 just going to make me crazy talking about it too much. But it is anybody who sees the documentary has got to think on some level if they don't know anything else about the case that well he's got to be out of jail now, isn't he? I mean look at this. This is very clear. These at least how the lines up. And then when you tell him no, he's he's still in prison. You can see their eyes roll and their face turn red and their you know the smoke starts to come out of their ears. Well I it just I, only this and it's not not by way of ex- explanation, but it is my experience. I've done a lot of work with with various tribes uh, throughout America, particularly here in California. And I can tell you that the relationship between the federal government, because of the legal state of the tribes themselves, because they are sovereign nation, nobody really understands the law. Nobody right. get nobody understands it. Uh, even the Bureau of Indian Affairs, there is a very strange relationship. It's like Swaziland in South Africa. You have a nation state in the middle of another nation state. So here, right here in California, we have tribal lands which are sovereign. 
Right. And so the relationship is very strange. You're right about here. You're right about that. But the underlying story with this particular case is that Leonard Peltier, who I know the story. He, I, yeah, I he's a, story. he was a member of AIM, which is the American Indian Movement. Right now, mm-hmm. what people don't always understand was that prior to this gunfight, this firefight on the Pine Ridge Reservation, the American Indian Movement embarrassed the Nixon administration bad by occupying the Bureau of Administra- uh, uh, the Indian Bureau of Indian Affairs, Affairs for a week, mm-hmm. and they held it. It was a big embarrassment to Nixon, and then later they occupied Wounded Knee, where the, the Sioux were massacred by Custer, the mostly women and children. They occupied it in defiance because they couldn't feed it. What was happening was uh, the chairman of the Oglala t- tribe, Dick Wilson, was taking the money from the government and not giving any to the tribe. And to keep his policies in place, he hired what is referred to now as terror squads, armed gunmen that would enforce his will mafia style on the reservation and these people you see in Oglala there's dozens of stories of people that were killed including John Trudell's family three kids and his wife all died when they burned his house to the ground the reservation at that time was the wild west it was unbelievable what they were going on there people they the governor of South Dakota said at the time that the murder rate at the reservation they lost 60 people in one year more than the entire state combined he was basically saying, and he says it in Oglala, I think. I think he even says it on, in the documentary. I think that's where I saw that interview. He talks about that it was Vietnam out there, and it was – you had to ba- – and basically, so what the Oglala tribe did was ask the American Indian Movement to come in and protect the community from okay. Dick Wilson's goons who were shooting the place to shit. And, and the FBI – was okay with it, and that's made very clear that the FBI was like, let them police their own, we don't want anything to do it, let them handle it. The FBI didn't do anything until AIM arrived and tried to fight back because the Nixon administration was embarrassed by these people, and he basically told the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, you know, at the time, shut them down. And that's what led to the firefight. What happened was is there was a, a lot of hostility. The two FBI oh. agents in question, nobody wants a federal agent killed. That's not what we're saying. That's, depic- that's despicable. They blazed in there in their sedans, and a firefight ensued, and basically all hell broke loose. But what we're saying is, is we want justice for the FBI men killed, for sure. But Leonard Peltier is not the person who killed them, and the evidence says as much. I mean, exactly. overwhelming evidence says as much. And I'm sorry to go on my diatribe there, but I'm very angry about this, because essentially Peltier in prison, what that's basically telling the entire country is, you're okay by his imprisonment by letting the FBI run a terror campaign and frame somebody up. You're basically saying you're cool with that because that's what they did to this guy. And that's where I get I have a lot of contention. That's exactly what it's saying and it it is it's 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 uh it's horrific to think that uh, anybody's uh, civil rights could be violated in that way. Or human basic human rights. Yeah. It's like we don't we don't care he's not we don't care that he's not guilty. We're going to keep him because we want to because we can. Yeah. And they, that's that's not good. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I, don't it's, know how, I, I can't put it more eloquently that it's just not good. It's kind of that lie that everyone sticks with for about two decades or three decades, and now none of them can just come through, come out with the truth. But the truth of it is, is they everyone involved, I think, knows who did it, including Peltier, because they were all there. Uh, but it was not Peltier, and the government knows it wasn't Peltier. But the government clearly wanted someone to pay, and when Rabado got off with uh, the acquittal the trial he was picked up to be tried with Peltier Peltier was still being extradited from Canada Rabideau got a no uh, he got acquitted when in his trial mm-hmm. the jury on his particular trial said this is nonsense these guys had nothing to do with it and he Peltier and him were supposed to be tried together Dino yes. Butler was also a defendant in that trial both Butler and Rabideau were let go and then at that point, it's n- well known that the FBI did a case study on why they lost that case, and they made sure they weren't going to lose the case when Peltier came to town. They moved the trial out of South Dakota to Fargo, gave it to a new judge, and then everything that started to stockpile from the descriptions of the van, they said, you know, Peltier was, Peltier who drove a van was then driving the truck, that these guys were, the whole thing is just such a convoluted joke. I recommend everyone see Incident on Oglala. It's unbelievable. If you want to see how quick these guys can frame you up and put you away and leave you there, Oglala mm-hmm. illustrates it perfectly. And it's on Netflix, so you've got, uh, you know, if you have Netflix, you have no excuse not to see it, other yeah. than just general disinterest. Yeah. I mean, just the, just the, and I'm, I, and I'm sorry to get on a tirade, but civil rights is a big, no. a big issue with us on this show. You know, if most we're known for our charity work, but we're very passionate about civil rights. And 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 honestly, mer, you know, uh. Uh, what is it, Myrtle Poor Bear? The Myrtle woman Poor that, Bear, yes. 
when the FBI showed her photos, that she is a very convincing witness. The FBI came to her, said you were involved with the shootout. She had no idea what they were talking about. She wrote three affidavits, the first one saying she knew nothing about it, the second one saying, okay, she was there, and the third one saying she was there and saw Peltier do it. She said mm-hmm. she never, you know, she is, just her testimony alone in 60 Minutes covers it very well. The fact that she comes clean and says, you know, she was bullied, they had threatened to kill her, they threatened to, in her words, put her in a meat grinder, said no one will ever find you. Just when you hear that from this poor woman, you know, just that oh. in itself... Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 uh, I'm 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 ashamed to be associated with uh, with uh, the situation just as a as an American. <laughs> yeah, it's embarrassing. It, the whole thing is embarrassing. And the federal the federal judge at the appellate court level that was looking at the ballistics evidence actually wrote a letter to Congressman in a way in Hawaii and said, pass this on to the president. This man needs to be released. So you, right. now, you now have federal elements involved saying enough is enough. And it's not just that 50 congressmen and senators have come together. I mean, look, it's, you know, whether Rage, Mach- Rage Against the Machine wrote a song about it, which they did, or Bono writes a song about it, I mean, that tends to move some pop culture mountains. But the fact of the matter is, is all the political elements want this guy out of jail. It's really beyond me that this guy, and he's beaten regularly in prison. They're trying to make him look like a troubled prisoner because they don't want a situation where they're letting a lot of prisoners out with the population issue. They don't want him to qualify for that, so they're making him look like a very, very rebellious prisoner. He's beaten on a regular basis. Nothing gets to him without the FBI's consent. That's unheard of for a prisoner been away for 30-plus years. The FBI needs to look unbelievable. On your computer, on your Wi-Fi radio, on your iPhone, commercial-free, original talk, only on L.A. Talk Radio, your favorite talk station. Favorite talk station. 